Okay, so again, what page is this, seven? Yes. Okay, page seven. 1.1 says, which diagram is which? Here are two diagram, diagrams. One represents 2 plus 5 equals 7. The other represents 5 times 2 equals 10. Which is which? Label the length of each diagram. So who thinks they know, and I'm just going to go to this first one first. Who thinks they know which of those two diagrams shows 2 plus 5 equals 10? Seven. Alex? Two and five. Why? Because the other one is two five times. Yeah, the other one is two five times. This one is a two and a five. One thing I want you to write is right here. I think you guys have a little bit of room above where it says one point above where it says learning goals. Like right here, you guys have some space, right? Yeah. I'm gonna write mine under that, but <coughs> anywhere up there at the top where you have space. I just lost my circle. We tried on the page on the left. We're going to use, oh yeah, that's fine. The white space, that's fine. If I could write. Try moving. It won't let me do anything. Now it's zooming. My goodness. It's nothing's working. It's letting me go up and down, but it's it's like stuck on zoom. There we go. Yep, but now I need to get rid of that. Go away. I need to find space to write. Okay, I'm going to write it right in here. You can write it on the white space on the left or above learning goals. I want you to write tape diagrams. Model. Addition. problems. Okay, that's important. Tape diagrams do not show multiplication problems. Tape diagrams model addition problems, but we have enough math knowledge to know if I have 5 plus 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 5, plus five it's easier to show it as what? Yes. So tape diagrams always model addition problems. So we always start with the addition problems. But then if it's repeated addition, we shorten it to a multiplication problem. Okay, so they always show addition sentences, but then we have enough ma math knowledge to know that if it's repeated addition, it's easier to just write a multiplication sentence. So write that anywhere you have room. still writing. No, are you still writing? Okay. So now back to example one. Alex already said that he thought this one showed two plus five. So above it, let's write two plus five. Where do you think we put the answer on these, Brady? 
Yeah, because this brace right here is showing like we want the value of all of that, which is seven. And if you know that a tape diagram always shows addition, you know to find that total that you just do two plus five to get seven. So the other one, this one has to be five times two, but what is it actually? Brady? Yeah, so under it, I want us to write that, right? Two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Just so we know, actually it's two plus two plus two plus two plus two, but we know enough to know that it's easier just to write that there are five twos and do five times two. Both of them, we get an answer of what? Ten. Ten. At the bottom, it is wanting us to draw the models for those equations. Do you have this, Colton? You already have that. So at the bottom, I have a lot less space than you do. I want you to just draw a line right here to separate number one and number two. For number two, we're actually going to draw two different models. So when you're drawing it, make sure you leave yourself some space. How do we start tape diagrams? Peyton, what shape do I need to draw? A rectangle, just a long skinny rectangle. Who thinks they know how I can model four plus three? Maddox? Um, make the line where you went further to the right, the right four and one box two. Yeah, and your boxes don't have to be perfect, but if one number is obviously bigger than the other, make one box bigger than the other. It doesn't have to be perfect, but like he said, just make the one box a little bit larger. The value of this box is four, the value of this box is three. <coughs> Yeah, and if you struggle drawing these, it's actually a brace, you can draw a bracket which is more boxy. You can even just kind of do that if that's easier for you. Okay, so that tape diagram shows 4 plus 3 equals 7. Who thinks they know how... What? They just did that good. Yeah, they were just telling you to fill it in. You can if you want. It's not going to matter. I'm going to go ahead and start the bar for number two. Who thinks they know how I can model that, Brady? Uh, split it into three pieces. Okay. So he's saying Even. split it into three pieces. And yeah, try and make them the same size. And again, if they're not perfect, it's fine. What is the value of each of those pieces? Four. Okay, so we could put the... This could mean that you have three fours. I want you to write that up there. That could mean that you have three fours. Let's go ahead and show the total here, what these add up to. What's four plus four plus four? Twelve. What else could that problem mean? That's what we modeled, that we have three fours. What else could it be? Maddox? Yeah, it could four times three mean that we have four threes. Yeah, so this is one where there's two different models that would work. Let's draw them both. Draw this one under, and again, you guys have a lot more room than I do. But this one, we're going to break it into four boxes, and the value of each of these is three. I have four threes or three fours. Would the value be the same? Yes. Yes. I'm going to show that this is still 12. And I could double check it. 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is also 12. Does anybody know any other problems that I could pull from those two models? Brady? Lexi? Yeah, because if I take 12 and divide it into three equal parts, what is each part worth? Four. Four. Remember, in a division problem, it's our dividend, which is our total, and then the divisor and the quotient are either the number of parts or the size of each part. So we could pull a division problem. If I could pull a division problem from those, 
What kind of problem could I pull from our addition one? Subtraction. subtraction. Who can give me a subtraction problem here? If I know seven, I take away three. The other part would have to be four. Okay. So what are what are we actually doing there? What are those called when we're doing all fact families? Fact families okay. Really, we're doing we're modeling fact families is what we're doing. Okay. So on one point two, that's kind of where we're going with it. Is it gives us two tape diagrams, and it says match each equation to one of the tape diagrams. So you guys have to turn the page. For purposes of uh, making this easier, we're going to call this one A and this one B. Turn the page, Hannah. <laughs> now, out to the side, and you guys don't have a ton of room here, but I think you have enough room for it. Who can give me the obvious addition equation for A? Bryce? 4 plus x equals 12. I want you to write that over here. Oops. 4 plus x equals 12. Do we see that one down there somewhere? Yes, it's number one. It's number one. So next number one, let's put an A. Because it's saying all of these nine equations match one of those two models. So even though we only have two models, we're writing those equations nine different ways. Let's talk about fact families. Who can give me another fact in this fact family? 4 plus x equals 12. Peyton? x plus 4 equals 12. What did she do there? She just flipped the, she just flipped the two numbers we were adding together. Is that one of our options? Okay, it's kind of like number 4, but what else did they do in number 4? They flipped the answer. They flipped the 12 to the front. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. So I agree, four is also the same. Who can give me another fact family, Bryce? 12 divided by four. No. It, oh, no, no, no. That would be, that's not that. 12. What's the opposite of add? It's always its opposites. Subtract. So okay. Five, 12 minus x equals four. What? Mm -hmm. You're gonna give me a subtraction fact. Seven. Chase? Oh, so let's, okay, so 12 minus 4 equals x because our answer minus either of the numbers we're adding. So 12 minus 4 equals x, and he said that one's number 7. And number what? Okay, why, number, why does number 5 work? Because that's the other fact in our fact family, right? We can take the 12 minus x and we would have to get 4. So that's a. Let's just look and see if there's any more. This one has division in it. Are we focusing on any division here? No, nope, we have no division. 4 times x. What about 8? OK, so that one's out. We're going problem by problem. 6 has multiplication. We don't have any multiplication. We only have addition and subtraction. OK, what about 8? Does that match any of our fact families? Oh. Bianca? Yeah, so really they took this one and just moved the 12 over to that side. So 8 also works. Can you write all of them What? Like up here? Yeah, write down the, because this is how we're coming up with them, is these fact families. But now, how can I get the subtraction problem from my model without writing the fact family out to the side? How can I figure out that one of my facts is 12 minus x equals 4? Alex, just using the model. So like the 12 is yeah, the is my total. So the 12 is my total. And then you just one of the two that yeah, if I take away x, what's left? Three, four. four. So 12 minus x is 4. If I have 12 minus 4, the only thing left would be x. Could I then find the value of x? Yeah. Yes. OK, that's where we're going is to solve these. But right now we have to kind of understand what the models are. OK, looking at the next one, number letter B, what is the addition sentence for B? Nev, what's the addition sentence for this model over here? X plus X plus X plus X. Yeah, X plus X plus X plus X, which is nine. number 9, because they have to equal 12. 
but we know repeated addition, it's easier to write that as a what kind of problem? Multiplication. And I have how many x's? So I have x four times, and that has to equal 12. So here's one that says I have x four times, and that equals 12. This one says I have 4 times x, and that equals 12. Is that the same thing? Yes. How do we come up with 2? We know it's b, but how, how, do I, how can I prove that it's b? Chase? Yeah, so we took the total of 12 and we broke it into four equal parts. And if um, our divisor is the number of parts, then our quotient would be the amount in each part or the, the number of each part, the, the value of each piece. So that's where the x would come in. Um, I'm going to give you one. I don't want to go too far ahead. That's as far as the other class got. We're actually just going to stop so that I keep you guys together. We're going to stop there.